rest of our seats in the presence of God. Amen. And I just want to encourage us, please, I want us to um, give attention to today's uh, message. I believe it's a word from God, and I pray the God of heaven will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go on, let's uh, open our text. Let's read um, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11. Deuteronomy 8, 11. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Amen. The Bible says, they say, be careful that you do not forget. That means it's possible to forget what God himself has given to us. It's possible for us to forget what God has done for us. It's possible for us to forget even God himself. And many of us will say, is that really possible? And today, I pray the God of heaven himself will show us. Many of us claim we are still with him, not knowing we are forgotten and we have left him long ago. But I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Before we go on, I just want to welcome us again to the month of November. Normally, I should be speaking on the theme of the month, which is possess heavenly blessings, which is actually a very good thing. God wants to give us great things, things are, that are beyond, that transcend these earthly things. Amen. He said he has laid up for us heavenly blessings. So God himself wants to allow us to possess those things. But today, I will not be speaking on that possess your heavenly possession. Amen. But I know and I'm praying that despite uh, we're not speaking about it, the God of heaven will cause us to receive those blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. That those heavenly blessings of healing, of deliverance, of salvation, of heaven itself will be our portion, our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And the reason I, uh, the Lord God changed my heart, I was driving just um, some days ago last week. And um, as I drove by the Calgary Transit bus, there was this inscription that was written on the bus that says, least you forget least we forget and as i read it and of course i understood what it meant you know it means we should not forget what the um, the the fallen soldiers the fallen heroes have done for us as a country we should not forget it that we should not forget how they have fought for us valiantly how they have given up their lives how they gave up their own freedom so we can be free how that they, they laid their lives down so we can have peace so we can walk freely but as I was thinking about it, I said, oh, yes, this is a very good message. Let's we forget. The Holy Spirit laid it in my heart and said, we have actually forgotten. Even as a country, we have even forgotten what even the soldiers did for us. Canada and the U.S. were countries that were believed to be founded on God. But will you say we are standing on God today? Will you say it is what... Those people, Abraham Lincoln and those people, said that they wanted. Is that what we are doing today? We are far from it. The U.S. will say, in God we trust. Will you say they are trusting in God today? In Canada, we say, oh, even though if you look at, 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 the, at, at the, um, um, the, um, the, the pledge of, of Canada, to the anthem of Canada, it is not what close to what we are doing today. We are far, 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 far from it. Today, I'm not here to talk, ab talk, talk about how we are falling and how we are forgotten as a country. I'm not a politician. I'm not speaking for Canada. I'm not asking us to remember what the fallen soldiers did, despite it's a good thing for us to remember, but that's not our focus today. Our focus is something else. And like I said, as I drove past that um, sea, train, sea bus and I saw, it says, least we forget, God himself said, least you forget but he told me not to use the word least we forget because he actually said we should use the word we have forgotten because if you look at our lives that if we even for those who call ourselves christians the uh, the thing that jesus christ did for us many of us have forgotten like we read in that text um deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 11 he said be careful that you do not forget the lord your god that means it's possible for you to forget. That means if you're not careful, you will forget. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Joshua, chapter 4, verse 4 to 7. So that the children of Israel will not forget. Something Joshua did is called standing stones. Even, it is not only Joshua that who did it, but if you look at throughout the scriptures, whenever God appears to, maybe let's, let's give example, um, Jacob in Bethlehem, in Bethel. Bible said he took up a stone and he anointed that stone. He called that place a name. 
It has become a standing stone for him to remind him. He didn't write it in his phone. He didn't write it as, as a remembrance. But whenever he goes past Bethel, he will remember. This was the stone I was laying on. And God revealed himself to me. When Abraham saw God, the Bible said he built an altar, altar unto God there. It became a standing stone to God there. Now let's read the book of Joshua chapter 4, verse 4 to 7. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God, into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, What do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be memorial, are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Amen. These stones are to be a memorial for Israel forever. Today is not a day for us to talk about what are the 12 stones to us today. There's some 12 things God has set aside for us that should remind us every time of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Today, we are not going to go into that because of our time because we want, to for, we want to look at how we are forgotten as a people. How we are forgotten what Christ did for us. To, um, many years ago, I believe, maybe about seven or eight years ago, I was watching TV during the Christmas around this time and um, uh, a reporter asked somebody, I said, do you know why we are celebrating December 25th? Honestly, only one person out of the many, I'm not sure if... It was only one that was um, uh, projected, but at least from what was shown on TV, only one knew that it was the celebration of Jesus Christ. Many said, oh, it is a time for us to share gifts. Oh, it is a time for us to be with family. The essence of the, of the very thing why we, that day was being set aside has been forgotten. And likewise, brothers and sisters, many of us have forgotten the very things God did for us. If you look at what Jesus Christ, if I ask you today, what did Jesus Christ do for us? Many of us are not even sure of what Jesus did for us. We have even, to the point, the Bible said, a, a time will come when a generation will appear that they will ask, what is these stones for? Because they have forgotten what it meant. And I will tell you, it seems as if as the generations keep, go, keep going down and down, we tend to forget more and more of what God has done for us. The Christianity that was practiced 50 years ago is not the same Christianity that is practiced today. In those days, the church of God was considered sacred. You do not play with the things of God. But today, we do all manners of things on the altar. In those days, I remember um, in Jesus' Life Ministries, many years ago in the 80s, you were not allowed to go on the altar, on the um, altar area. I remember as kids, when you were running around and you want to chase somebody and you want to go on the altar, they'll tell you, come down. Children are not allowed to go there. Come down. But today, we even bring gestures and we bring all manners of people on the very altar which we used to consider sacred. We are forgotten. Today, our children cannot even tell you why they say that um, we should not run on the altar anymore. Why you should stand before God. You know, it's true the church is a place. It's just a building. But if, imagine if God was sitting on that altar Will you be acting the way you are acting? Will you allow your child to be talking and be playing on the phone as he's doing? If indeed you believe strongly that God is sitting down here with us, will you let your child to be on the phone? Or will you yourself be talking to your friend while he's talking? Even when the prime minister comes, you won't do that. How much more God? If I ask you, what has Christ done for us? What would you say Christ has done for us as a people, as Christians? And the first thing is this, which Christ did for us, which many of us have forgotten, that he gave, God himself gave his son Jesus Christ to be a ransom for us. Let's read Romans chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. Romans 5, 8 to 10. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Amen. He, we were redeemed by God. Let's read that. Uh, the, 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 yes. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, 
shall we be saved through, through his, life. his life. Amen. Jesus Christ died for us, so we will not die. He took our place. God replaced. Imagine how can a man give his only son a replacement for somebody who hates him. And that is what God did for us. When we are yet, when we are still sinners, it is not that now Jesus Christ is just dying for me. He died for me even when I hated him. He died for me even when I did not even know him. He died for us when we, even when we even rejected him. He died for us. But many of us have forgotten that act that he did. It's true, we still quote John, John 3, 16, uh, often in, in the churches, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that those who believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But do you think you still have, do you, do you, do you see the true meaning of those words? He gave his only begotten son. I'll tell you, most men, we kill other people to save their own son. But that was not the case for God. He killed his own son to save you. Look at the politicians. Why do you think they send you to war? They don't send their own children to war, but they send you to the front to, to go and die for their own children. But when, God came, when it came to the time of God, God himself sent his own son to die for you. That is what he did for us. He, we were given that Jesus Christ became a ransom for us. In the place which we have died, Jesus Christ became the perfect lamb to die for us. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. But many of us have forgotten this act that Jesus Christ did for us. And that's why you see people still live their life as if they're still in sin. They live their life in such a manner that still that is, is, that, that, that breaks the heart of God. When a man gave his only son and said, I want him to die for you so you can be my own son and live like my son and yet you are still living, living like a vagabond. Don't you think it will break his heart? And that's what we have done to God. We are breaking the heart of God. Many of us will say, is it possible to break the heart of God? Yes, it is. In the book of Genesis, the Bible says, it repented God that he made man. And I will tell you that some people who God is saying, do they even deserve the blood of my son? Do they even deserve the work of my son on the cross? I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of um, 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2.24, 1 Peter 2.24, 1 Peter Chapter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. The second thing Jesus Christ did for us is he came to take away our sins. He came to take away our sins. I'll read from here. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He died for our sins. He himself died for us. So that's what thing he did for us. Our sins that, that became an hindrance for us to stand before God. Jesus Christ came to take it away. If you read the book of Romans chapter 7, verse 24 to 25, it says, what a wretched man I am. He said, the things I want to do, I do not do, but the things I do not want to do, I find myself doing. He said, who will deliver me from this power of sin? He said, but thanks be to God, true, who would... Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ delivered us from the power of sin. Sin has plagued us, has kept us from God, has caused us, O oh Lord, to be beneath when we should be above. The Bible said, I've seen an evil under the sun, such that proceed from the ruler. Kings walking on, uh, princes walking on foot and slaves riding on horses back. It is sin that makes that reverse. We are not supposed to die as human beings, but sin brought death. And what Jesus Christ did was, he came to take away our sin. He came to take away what plagues us, what causes us not to live at peace. We live in a world today where you see father against son, son against father, mother against a suckling child, friend against friend. Today we are fighting wars and you cannot even tell. What is the reason why the war is being fought? I, uh, um, I still, when, I, when you look at the, the war between Russia and Ukraine, honestly, it is something that you is beyond why you say, why are they even fighting? Everybody has their own country. 
then tell me why are you not trying to encroach into somebody else? It's because of the sin nature in us. And that is what Jesus Christ has come to deliver us from. To deliver us from the power of sin. Let's read um, Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. Genesis 8, 21. The Bible said that the Lord smelled the smelling aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living, thing, all living creatures as I have done. You can see the place of sin in our lives. It has become such a thing that God said, it, the, the, the thought of man from childhood is evil. And thank be to God, he came to deliver us. He said in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 that he said we can come boldly to his presence because of Jesus Christ. Imagine that thing that, that keeps us away. In the book of Isaiah chapter 59, scripture says that, that it is your sin that has kept you away from me. And in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, it reveals to us that Jesus Christ, we can come boldly to the throne of God because of Jesus Christ. He took that thing away that was an hindrance between us and God. That's the work he did. And today, many of us are still far from God. We have forgotten what was done for us. The Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 8, from verse 1 to 2, he said that there's no, now there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But today, we are not living as we ought. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. If you look at us believers, and I pray God will help us in Jesus' name, that the glory of God and the power of God will be made manifest in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let, the my three things Jesus Christ did for us is he saved us from hell and the dominion of Satan. He saved us from hell and the dominion of Satan. Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 3, verse 18. John 3, 18. John chapter 3. Verse 18, if you dare, you can read it, please. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Amen. Let's also read Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to 15. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Amen. It saved us from hell and from the dominion of Satan. The judgment of sin is hell. And many of us, we don't preach hell anymore because we don't want to think about hell. But I'll tell you, hell is a place... Hell is not even the final destination. Lake of fire. It's the place that all who reject Christ, all who live in sin, will go. And Jesus Christ came to deliver us from that place. So why shouldn't we live in accordance to that life? Today we are not living like Christians anymore. We are living as people who are going to sin, who are going to hell, who are going into, into judgment. And I always tell people, don't assume because you are a pastor, that you are going to heaven straight away. Brothers and sisters, there are many, there are many that are actually not, there are many who are living a life which is not of God. There are many who are living such lives that do not reflect Christ. By pray God himself will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. As believers, we need to ensure that we live for God. Many of us are living as if we are still on that path to hell. But Jesus Christ has come to deliver us from hell. But many are still heading there. Because the Bible said, two shall lay on the bed. One will be taken and one will be left. One will be taken and one will be left. And the thing is this, some of us think that because we are all, oh, I'm a, I'm a pastor's wife. I'm a pastor's son. Oh, I will not go to hell. You See, brothers and sisters, if you don't live a life order of God, you will go to hell. But remember, should you go to hell, after Jesus Christ has paid the price for you not to enter that place. 
I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. We need to live a life worthy of him. That's what Jesus Christ did for us. He came to deliver us from the place of called hell, place called um, uh, lake of fire, and from the dominion of Satan. If you read um, the book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 17, see, you need to understand the, who the devil is. The devil is such a cruel master that he will not set his captives free. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 17, he said, the man who made the world a wilderness, who overthrew his cities and will not let his captives go home. That is who the devil is. Someone who is so cruel that will not let his captives go home. Who will not let them free. No matter how much he has taken, he wants to take more. The Bible says there are three things that are never satisfied. And they will never, they will never be, be, be filled. Grave. No matter how many people have died, the, de- the grave still wants more. And that is the devil. And Jesus Christ came to set us free from that power. Imagine Jesus Christ said in the book of Luke chapter 13 verse 16, he said, should this woman who the devil has bound for 18 years not be set free? Jesus Christ has come to set us free. But many of us are still living in that bondage. And that was why Peter also said in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, he said, your enemy the devil is going around looking for whom to devour. Brothers and sisters, we need to live a life that would not allow the devil to divorce. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Number four thing which Jesus Christ did for us is he made us his heir. He made us heirs with him, co-heirs with him. John chapter 1 verse 12 says that yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. He gave them the power to become the children of God. We are children of God. As Jesus, Jesus, Jesus I said, I no longer call you friend. I call you brothers. Now we are co-heirs. Now we have an inheritance with the things of God. But are we living like that? You, do, do we say that, oh, we have the same um, rights to God as Jesus Christ does? When Jesus Christ said, the things I have done, he said, greater things will you do. Will you say we are doing greater things like Jesus Christ did? No. And yet that, was, well, that is what Jesus Christ did for us. He came to make us heirs of God. But many of us are not living like that. And number five, because of our time, is he gave us what we do not even deserve. Brothers and sisters, we sinned. We deserve to die. Yet, he gave us salvation. He gave us healing. He gave us deliverance. He gave us upliftment. He gave us to a turnaround. He gave us a lifting up when, this, when others are saying there's a casting down. He gave us the things we do not even deserve. If we read the book of John chapter 14 verse 27, he said, Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. That's what Jesus Christ did for us. What we do not deserve, he gave to us. The peace that transcends this world. That even in fire, we say, Father, I know that it is well. That is what he gave to us. And also in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, he said, Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. With every, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Christ. That's what he gave us. This part we do not deserve it, but that is what he gave us. Number six for, for today, which many of us don't think about, is he paid the price. He died for us. To be honest, if you read the account of how Jesus Christ died, nobody can ever go through it. Let's read Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. But God demonstrates his love for us in this, yes. While we were still sinners, yes. Christ died for us. He died in our place. He died so we won't die. That's what he did. That beating that you should have received, Jesus Christ received it on your behalf. That crown of thorns you should have won, Jesus Christ wore it for you. 
That those nails that should have gone through your hands, Jesus Christ took it for you. Those nails that should have gone through your legs, he took it for you. And he still has the mark to show for it. When Th- Thomas, in John chapter 20, verse 27, said, Until I see his hands, and until, and until I see his sight, Jesus Christ still has the marks to show for it in his hands and his sight. So don't think when he rose up, everything disappeared. He still has the marks to show for it. They're still there. And those are the things. He said, put your hand into it. That means it became like a hole. And those are the things he still has. Which we should have, which, which we should have come upon us. That is the thing he has. And many of us will say, but how did I forget? Is it really? But I didn't forget. I'm still a Christian. Brothers and sisters, many of us have forgotten. Let's read Exodus chapter 32, verse 4. You will see the children of Israel that were just delivered just now. Not more than a few days ago. Are people now that are, that are now making a golden calf saying, this is the God that delivered us from, from Egypt, that brought us out. How can you say, this is the God that brought us out of Egypt? Did that God take you out from Egypt? Did that God bring the place upon Pharaoh? Did that God bury Pharaoh in, 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 in the Red Sea? Did that God make you to cross on, on dry ground? And yet... Now they're saying, this is the God that has set us free. Even if you look at the, 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 the apostles, they were with Jesus Christ for over three years. They lived and slept with him. And yet, when Jesus Christ was about to die, even Peter, one of the closest to him, denied him three times. Imagine, quickly he forgot what Jesus Christ can do. And yet he denied Christ three times. And even at the point he told the other disciples, you know, I'm going away fishing. You know what? I can't stand here anymore. Let me go. And some of you might say, but I have not gone, I don't have an idol that I'm, I'm, now, I'm now set up to say I'm worshipping. I've not gone fishing like Peter did, but I'll tell you, many of us have. And we have done that by going back to our fields, by going back into our, the scene that the same thing that we were delivered from, we have gone back to it. And that's how we have forgotten. We have, we, have, we have forgotten what Jesus Christ did for us. Now we are not doing the same very things that he, did, he, he saved us from. Let's read Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 4 to 6. Hebrews 6, 4 to 6. It is impossible yes. for those who have once been enlightened, yes. who have tasted the heavenly gift, yes. who have shared in the Holy Spirit, yes. who have tasted the goodness of the word of God yes. and the powers of his coming age, yes. and who have fallen away, to be brought back to repentance, yes. to their loss. They are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Amen. And I pray that will never be our portion in Jesus' name. But this is what many of us are doing. We are nailing Christ again to the cross a second time. Those of us who have been enlightened, who have tasted heavenly gifts, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, and yet we are going back. We have gone back, and that's how we have forgotten. The Bible said in the book of Romans, chapter 6, from verse 1 to 2, he said, Shall we continue the sin and the, uh, and the grace may abound? He said, God forbid. He said, No, by no means should we do that. But many of us are. We're doing that very thing. We have forgotten. And you say, oh, have, I, have I forgotten? You have gone back to your field, you have gone back to the place of sin. You have forgotten. How have you forgotten? You are, not, you are not living a life contrary to the will of God, to the life Christ himself wants you to live. It you, means you are forgotten. Let's read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. Ephesians 4 1. As a prisoner for the Lord. Yes. Then I heard you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Amen. Will you say you are living a life worthy of the calling you have received? Will you? Will you say you are living a life? Paul said, even at one point, he said, what is unto me? If I preach not the gospel. But today, many of us are comfortable in our fields and we have not even lived the life which God himself wants for us. Despite he paid the price and he wants us to live a certain way. But we are, we don't, we are not doing it. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Number three way by which we are forgotten, we do not apply ourselves to full potential. In the book of Psalm, chapter 82, verse 6, 
The Bible says, I say to you, you are God's and son of the most high. I'll tell you, we are more than what we are now in the physical. But many of us are living below it. And that's how we are forgotten. Let's read John chapter 14, verse 12. John 14, 12. Very truly I tell you. Yes. Whoever believes in me. Whoever believes in me. Will do the works I have been doing. Yes. And they will do even greater things than this. Yes. Because I am going to the Father. Amen. But we are not. It means we have forgotten. We have not even done what Jesus Christ did. We are not even doing anything for him. We are not applying ourselves. Amos 6, 1 says, Woe to them who are at ease in Zion, who feels complacent in Samaria. And many of us are like that. We have become so complacent that we don't even, we, we, we have forgotten what God has done for us. We think because we are in North America, then it means that we have everything. Remember, North America and all the glory of this world will perish with fire. One day, this world, which we are all, all the houses and the things we are keeping, Bible said, with fire, they will be burnt up. In the days of Noah, it was water. God said, I will never again destroy the earth with water. And it is sure. Water will not never again destroy the earth. But something else worse than water is coming. This very world which we know it, will be consumed with fire. All its elements, from inside, it will burn out. And many of us are thinking that this is where we need to be. The number four way by which we have forgotten, how we have forgotten, is we have given ourselves to the cares of this world. Mark chapter 4, verse 19. But, but the, the worries of yes, this life, yes, the deceitfulness of wealth. Amen. The worries of this life, so if you want to know what are the cares of this world, the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, uh -huh. and the desires for other things. The desire for other things. Come in and choke the word. Three things. And these are the three things that is making most of us to forget. The worries of this life. Where will my son go to school? Will I get promoted tomorrow? Will I get that job? The worries of this life. Of the things we are going to eat, of the things we are going to wear, of where we are going to live. Of how people are going to see us. The deceitfulness of wealth. We think that the more I have, I will be satisfied. Brothers and sisters, if you have $70 million, you will still complain. I always say this. The same way I complained when I, ha I, was, being, I was earning $9.50 in Toronto. It is still the same way I'm complaining now. It has not changed. Ask yourself, why is um, Elon Musk trying to charge people $8 for Twitter? Does he not, does he not have enough money already? He, still, he thinks, if I still want more, I still want more. Imagine. I actually saw something online. I'm not sure if it's true. One, I think it's Stephen King or one person said, um, why will you charge $20 for Twitter? If that, I'm not doing it anymore. Then, and then um, um, Elon Musk tweeted and said, no, you know what? Yes, $20 might seem much, but we need to still run these things. And that we still need to make a little bit of money. So we'll, we'll do uh, $8. Imagine a man that is worth over $500 billion, um, million dollars is bargaining for $12 with a man worth over $300 million. Imagine. Ask both of them, does $12 a month mean anything to do to them does even hundred dollar a month mean anything to them and yet you've seen them bargaining over twelve dollars twelve dollar saying no i can't pay 12 uh, 20 i can only pay it and these are the things that have made us to forget the worries of life the deceitfulness of wealth the desires for other things today you have this one tomorrow you want that one now what you have does not make any sense to you. It is the one that you don't have. It is that thing that is not in your pocket that you think is the best thing after sliced bread. And these are ways we have forgotten. And God is saying to right now to you, we are forgotten. And this is where we need to ask ourselves, Father, in what way have I forgotten? In what way have I given myself to the worries of the world, to the deceitfulness of wealth, to the desires for other things? In what way have I not given myself, applied myself as I ought to? In what ways have I not lived, have I lived contrary to the, to, to the life of Christ? In what way have I gone back to my field? Because in such things, that is how we forget. 
Many of us have forgotten the, the standing stones God has shown to us. And his word is actually, it, it has everything in it. But today, we don't really focus on the word anymore. If you tell people, live holy, they will say, you know, there are some things that were in the Old Testament that does not really apply to us. And if you show them some things in the New Testament, they say, you know there's some things that you know in the New Testament that it is based on, uh, on their culture. You know, Paul said that women should cover their head because of where he was. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I tell people, you do not need to get there before you know that covering of hair can take you to hell. I tell people I'd rather be on the extreme right where everything I do is excessive, but it's good. When I get there, God will say, ah, I didn't tell you to fast three times a week. God, thank you for fasting. Welcome to my, my abode, my faithful servant. You don't want to get there, 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 and that, and God tells you, hey, I told you to cover. You didn't cover. Go to hell. People will say, ah, but you know, I can use my, my tithe is my money. I can use it wherever I want. You don't want to get there, there, and God tells you that I made this very explicit, and I told you, that the sacred thing is mine. Remove it from your house. And you do not remove it. For that, go to the other side. Some of us will say, you know, it does not matter. I can do whatever I want. Brothers and sisters, it matters. Because Jesus Christ paid a lot for it. The things I bought with, that I bought from the dollar store, I don't mind if my son wants to play with it. Uh, at times I mind because I tell myself, it might have lead in it. It's from China. Don't touch it. Not because I value it. But there's some things it, it can, cannot touch. I, before you get there, if you look at my eye, hey, God, stop that. Because I know I paid dearly for that. So don't near that one. That one, it is not one dollar. And that's what Jesus Christ has done for us. Jesus Christ paid, he gave his life for us. But many of us have forgotten. In North America, one day of the 365 days is set aside to celebrate what the fallen heroes did for Canada. Do you think one day is enough? Even that day, many of us don't even remember why we are home on November 12th or 11th. We forgot why we are even home. And likewise, many of us have even forgotten what Jesus Christ did for us. One of the stand, because of our time, one of the standing stones Jesus Christ spoke about is the Holy Communion. Like I said, today is not a day to talk about the 12 standing stones that Joshua brought to the other side that reminded the generations of what God did for them. One of them, which I'm just giving you expo, is sacrament, the, um, the Holy Communion. Just like I said, do this in remembrance of me. By you breaking the bread, by you drinking the cup, you remember what Jesus Christ did. Do this in remembrance of I just want us to bow our heads. In what way have you forgotten? In what way have you lived your life to, to a point where you, God himself does not make any meaning to you? That what he did on the cross has become so insignificant that you now say, you know what? You know, it does not matter when he sent his son to die for you. In what way? That's one of us going to ask God for mercy I just want us to begin to pray and just say, Oh God of heaven, have mercy, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We